In this demonstration, we're going to review peer motion. Peer motion is primarily used to migrate your current three-part environment onto a new three-part environment. You can also use peer motion via online import to go from an EVA to a three-par. So again, we're going to do a online replication of our host environment and the LUNs associated to those hosts from an existing three par. Let's say it's a F class or a T, uh, an older system, right? And you're gonna you got your new three par, and you want to replicate the configuration and do an online migration of those LUNs that are presented to those hosts online from the older platform to the newer platform. All right, so that's what we're going to go through today, and I'm going to show you kind of the steps of how to do that. So I've got two systems. Uh, the top one here is a V400, the bottom one is a V800, and I'm going to be moving a, a host and its uh, exported LUN from the 800 to the 400. Okay, so this is it. This is my environment here. I've got, I've already provisioned this um, this one gig, I'm sorry, this 100 gig volume, and it's exported to this host, right? So this would mimic my existing environment. I've got iometer running on it, so we have a little bit of work going on, okay? So let me minimize that. And now let's look at the host real quick. All right, so if we look at the host associated to this top system, there's nothing here, all right? I haven't provisioned any hosts. Right. When I look at the bottom system, the one I'm going to be migrating from, you see all the hosts. And this is the one here that we're going to be migrating over. All right, so let's quickly talk about setup for a second. All right, now the, well, the basic port provisioning would mean that I have uh, two paths zoned from this array, my source array, to my target array. All right. The host would also be path to both arrays. But I'm gonna have a separate zone between the two arrays. The source array would remain as host ports, and the target array, you'll see as we go through the configuration, will convert its host ports to peer ports for the migration process. When we do a cleanup, when it's over, it'll revert back to host ports, okay? So I hope I didn't lose you there. It is in the manual if you're, if you're interested. All right, so let's go to peer motion. Now we already have a host configured. We have the paths already um, zoned that are uh, between these two arrays for array to array communication. All right. So now we're going to create the peer motion configuration. And this starts like remote copy where I select my source system and my destination system. So now we, uh, I've selected next here, and here's all the ports that are available to me. I already know from my zoning that 041 is one of them. I'm going to pick its pair target port, right? So this is the destination system that I'm trying to configure, all right? So here's the other port path here. So here's my destination system, and it's going to take these two ports, and it's going to convert those into peer ports. They're currently host ports, all right? On the source system, all of these are, are already defined as host ports or uh, for remote copy or something, but the, the ports that are targeted specifically for this replication are already host ports and they are supposed to stay that way. All right, Only the destination system will flip into peer ports. Now that's important and I'll show you why here in a second. So let's go ahead and commit that change. We'll see here the system is now configuring the peer ports on our target system. All right, so now here is the WWNs on our target system. Now, this is important because you didn't zone this. When you zoned it as host ports together, this would probably be one zero 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 in my case, 
and it flipped this bit to a two. All right. So make sure you capture the the WWNs for the peer port, which had flipped the bit, right, and put those into your zoning. Okay. If not, you need to do it, or this is not going to work. All right. It'll just give you an error that you have the zones incorrectly. So your host system will still you know have its normal zones, and the peer ports will have or its normal WWNs for host connections, but the peer port WWNs will do a bit flip. All right, so let's click OK here. And now we can see that our paths have been associated from these host ports that are already zoned to these peer ports, which we had just provisioned. All right, so now I'll click Finish. All right, so now here's the makings of our peer motion configuration. I'm going to now select peer motion configuration here at the top so that we can pull up the summary page. You'll see that I'm moving between this source system to this destination system. I'm going to slide the screen over so that we can see the throughput of the arrays here. All right, I'm actually going to minimize this too just to make the window a little bit easier to watch. If I can hit that down arrow, there we go. Okay. So now, step by step, we have to copy the configuration information, and you'll see this kind of works as a as a, uh, a table that we work down to. We need to copy the storage settings and configuration information from the source system to the destination system. All right. So in this particular case, these are arrays are already pretty similar. So I it doesn't say here users and domains and any of this needs to be selected so it's grayed out uh, because the systems are in sync. In your particular case, you might have users and domains and some of these other configurations that have been altered, and you want to make sure that you're, you know, you, you replicate that as well. In this particular case, all I have is host information, right? So there's 14 hosts, and there's no host over here, and I want to copy all those, all that host information to my, all these hosts over to my destination system. So we'll click finish and get that done. Okay, notice that it went gray now, so it's completed, right? Now we can talk about migrating data, all right? So now we need to at least set up the first part of it, and I'm gonna pause here, all right, in just a second, because we're gonna be doing an online import, and I wanna do this system here. Okay, so I'm just selecting this guy, here's the volume I wanna to associate to it, here's the paths. And now I'm gonna click Finish. All right, and yes, I wanna continue later. So now what it's doing is it's setting up the connections from my target system to my host. All right, it's adding paths. Now I need to go back to my host, and I'm going to rescan. This is just prepping up MPIO on that side so that we've got those new paths associated to it. I'm just going to do it three times. All right, back to my host. We see here that now there's some communication going on, right? So we've got some host throughput. So what's happening? Well, the host is now communicating to the destination system, and the des destination system is now relaying to the source system. So I'm going to go to my source system, to my host, and I'm going to unmap these paths. Let's go back to our host system. We'll see that my volume is still there. I'll even rescan again. It's important to do all these scanning steps. All right, so make sure you don't skip it. My is still running. All right, because this is updating MPIO with the new information. We just dropped paths. So I need to make sure that MPIO, you know, reflects those changes. Okay, now back to our target system. I'm going to slip back here to Pure Motion, and now I'm going to import the volume. See, we've got inner inner array communication going on. Okay, so let's import the, that volume. All right, so here's the host. Remember, we set that up, right? 
Okay, I'm going to go next. And here's the volume that I'm going to be importing. Now I can select if it's just a full volume, not a thin volume. I can select to convert it, right? So I can go to thin, or I can actually go to full. Right, or I can just say same as source. Right, and then I pick the destination CPG, which is this guy here. All right, I'm just going to add that to my configuration. Boom. Click finish. All right, now let me pull this up. We should start to see. There we go. So now the it's moving. All right, and go back to here. Pull up biometer. We see that the work's still continuing. LUN is still there. Intercommunication is going on between the arrays. All right, if I pull up performance charts, let's do that real quick. I can look at, uh, let's look at a couple of things. Look at PD, and we'll come down to ports. Look at host ports. All right, we'll go to the source system. We'll also look at PDs. And we'll look at those ports here. So our destination system, we're replicating that LUN over to the destination system. We look at our host ports. We can see some activity from the host side currently going on, right? So the host is now communicating to the destination system during the time that it's replicating this volume over to the destination system. We look at our PDIOs for our source system, and we can see here that it's running as well, right? Because it's replicating, so there's a lot of reads. All right, and we can look at the host ports, and we'll see that there's some host port traffic. If we look at uh, you know what's really coming across here, 041, this is the replication ports, right? So this is showing all the host ports, and these are the ports that I'm, I'm replicating on the uh, 071 and 171, which is probably the yellow one here. 171, right? So there's no other ports actually uh, communicating. So all the all the communication to the host is actually through um, these paths, right? Because remember, now we flip the bit, so it's not these aren't the uh, peer paths. These are host ports. So this is the host ports that are mapped to the host. Okay, so let's go back to our pure motion configuration. We can see here that the replication is almost done. There we go. We're at 89%. Let this finish up. It'll just take a minute. Now you'll notice that when it does finish, it'll go to 100%. And it'll set there for a couple of seconds. Just make sure it goes to the completed with a little green checkbox, right? And then we're ready to proceed. And we'll see some other things uh, appear up here when it's ready. All right, but we're almost done. Okay, we can see the inner host communication has now dropped off, right? Or inner server uh, three-part communication has dropped off. All right, so what's happened here? Well, all the data has now fully replicated to the destination system. The host is now only communicating to the destination system. Okay, so let's go back to, oh, we're waiting on that to make sure we're done, done, done. All right, let's go back here and we could take a look at uh, PDIOs on the source system. Look at that. There's really no activity here anymore because the volume has fully migrated over to the system. And check that out. All right, so that one volume has now fully transferred over to our destination system, which is currently now running on. Right there. So go back to our pure motion configuration. Let me hit refresh. Let's just see, you know, GUI again, sometimes slow. There we go. So it's checked. Now we can see here that we've got uh, a couple of things done, right? Migrate da data. This is if I wanted to migrate something else. All right. I could then select another host and, and all of that. 
Now I could do a post migration cleanup, which would be my next step, because I'm done with all of my migrations between these two hosts. Okay, let's go back to our volume here. All right, we're still still looking good. All right. Now you notice that post migration cleanup has completed. Now I can remove the peer motion configuration. I'm going to unconfigure the peer ports. All right. So when I unconfigure the peer ports, that port that peer motion peer relationship will be torn down. All right. So let's go ahead and click yes. And now we're done. So now we have our one host. If we look at, let's go back to hosts. That's the source system. Oh, so again, we'll just take a look at the source system real quick. So here's our, our Blade 07. It's not mapped at all. We can look at our destination system. And here's its mappings. And we are currently up and running on our destination system. It couldn't be easier. Thanks a lot.